was created in 1841 by Adolf Sachs, an instrument maker. While he was working at his father's instrument shop in Brussels, he began creating an instrument with the projection of a brass instrument, like a trumpet, and the note agility of a woodwind, like a clarinet. His idea was to have it overblow at a change in octave, which would allow the instrument to have identical fingerings for both registers. In other words, a low G is fingered with these three keys. A high G is fingered with the same three keys plus the thumb key. And same goes for an A, a B, and a C. The modern day saxophone consists of a tube of thin brass, but it's classified as a woodwind instrument because of the wooden reed. Along the tube are about 20 tone holes of different sizes. These are covered by keys, which are mostly along the bore, or midsection, containing soft leather pads which produce an airtight seal when closed. The left thumb occupies the thumb key, which controls the easy shift from lower octave to upper octave. Even though the saxophone is made of brass, it is called a woodwind instrument. This is because the sound waves are produced by an oscillating wooden reed and because notes are produced by the opening and closing of tone holes. The saxophone uses a single reed mouthpiece similar to the clarinet. This drawing shows the mouthpiece shaded in black and the reed not shaded. The reed is springy and can bend. Sometimes it can spring on its own. For a saxophonist, this is bad. It's called a squeak. Normally, the reed's vibrations are controlled by the vibrations of the air in the saxophone. But it's also true that the reed's vibrations control the flow of air into the saxophone. The two go hand in hand. If you imagine steady flow with no vibration, it depends on the difference in pressure between the player's mouth and the mouthpiece. If this pressure difference is increased, more air flows through the slim gap left between the mouthpiece tip and the reed tip, which means this graph of air flow versus mouth pressure begins almost proportionally. However, as the pressure in the mouth gets large enough to bend the reed, it tends to push it upwards and closes the gap between the mouthpiece and the reed completely. So, if blown hard enough, the gap closes up completely and the airflow stops. Looking at the point in the graph where the flow decreases with increasing pressure, this is called a negative resistance. In terms of electricity, this means that energy is put into a circuit. In the saxophone, it is negative resistance that provides the energy lost in the rest of the instrument. Most of this energy is lost inside the bore, or midsection, and only a small fraction is emitted as sound. As well as controlling the flow of air, the reed has a role in the saxophone acoustics. As the pressure inside the mouthpiece increases, the reed is pushed outwards. At the same time, suction pulls the reed inwards toward the bore. Therefore, the reed increases and decreases the mouthpiece volume with high or low pressure. The reed behaves almost like an extra volume of air, which could be compressed and expanded by changing pressure in the mouthpiece. It has the effect of changing the frequency of each note a little. Adolf Sachs's invention of the saxophone and his improvements in musical discoveries have made a great impact on the world. And almost 200 years later, saxophonists everywhere are thanking sax for his improvement of our knowledge of how the reed is everything to a saxophone and how airflow and mouth pressure go hand in hand with the reed to make the saxophones memorable and amazing sound. Mm -hmm.